Hello and you're all very welcome to this presentation. Today we're going to cover the Impressionist artist Edgar Degas. So here are our learning intentions for today. You can pause the video and have a read of those if you like. So Edgar Degas, you can see him here on the right. He was the son of a wealthy banker and he originally educated as a lawyer. He scrapped then being a lawyer and he entered École de Beaux Arts in 1855, and he trained in the classical tradition of art. So the drawing skills he developed while in college and the, the copying of old masters does separate him from the Impressionist artists, and we'll go into that a little bit later. His interest was painting everyday scenes of the people in Paris, being in the theatre, horse racing and domestic scenes, especially women. He had a very difficult personality, he was very hard to get on when, with, but he was one of the main organisers of the Impressionist group shows. So as Degas got older, his eyesight worsened and he eventually had to stop painting and he made sculptures with his hands because it was something tactile. Composition, movement and subject matter are also the most important aspects of Degas' paintings. So Degas was not committed to the Impressionist characteristics. He absorbed some of the characteristics of Impressionism and did exhibit at most of the Impressionist ex exhibitions in Paris. But he had no interest in outdoor landscapes. He preferred to paint figures. And his main focus on figure painting was women. And because he focused on figure painting, he had no interest in landscape and then therefore no interest in plein air painting. He preferred to paint in his studio. Degas was influenced by photography and by prints, and this can be seen in how he crops the edges of his compositions to create a sense or an impression of spontaneity, as if the painting is kind of a snapshot of the scene, like photography. And this spontaneity of his paintings stems from his different and very innovative viewpoints. And this approach was enhanced by the close interest in photography and his exceptional drawing skills that he learned in college. So Degas was first and foremost a draftsman, whereas the other Impressionist artists drew very little. And he learned his drawing skills while in college, studying the classical artist techniques. So a draftsman then is a person who makes detailed technical plans or drawings. Degas himself was fascinated by movement and he studied the actions of the human body. And we can see here the standing dancer seen from behind and the dancer Jules Perrault. That Degas would carefully study the human figure and put down marks of charcoal. These drawing skills that Degas has and developed in college really do separate him from other Impressionists as they did on plein air painting. Degas's subject matter was humanity and movement and he was a regular visitor to the Opera House in this opera house, he produced several drawings in pastels and paintings of the ballerinas. Now, these were not graceful drawings of the ballerinas on stage, but a backstage view of the ballerinas practicing or rehearsing backstage. And this gives the paintings a more of a comfortable or relaxed atmosphere. And thanks to Degas's relationship, with the influential dancer and choreographer Jules Perrault, so this is him here, Degas was able to produce a wide range of ballet pictures showing dance, dancers rehearsing because of his relationship with this gentleman. So this painting is called The Dance Class and it's from 1874 and it's one of Degas' most famous paintings. And the subject matter is of ballerinas practicing or rehearsing in a dance hall. So the scene itself 
has the illusion of being painted from a raised position. So we feel like as the viewer, we're looking down on the whole ballet class. And this enables us to, to view the full room itself. The room has a receding linear perspective, and that's a key word to write down. And this is emphasized, this linear perspective is emphasized by the lines here on the parquet floor and the lines here. We can see the room goes into the background and also by the figures. So these diminishing figures in the background here heighten the perspective. So we can see the larger figures here in the foreground and then followed by the smaller figures here. So we really get the sense of a perspective here, a receding linear perspective. So between the little ballerinas in the background and the two larger ballerinas in the foreground to us, there's a large empty space. And this creates contrast. And the space, this large empty space is occupied by the old ballet master Jules Perrault who is Degas' friend. So he is standing with his legs apart and he's leaning on a wooden stick. This wooden stick is used to beat the time while the dancers are dancing. And one girl in the centre just here is paying attention to him, but nobody else is paying attention to him. The two dancers in the foreground, so these two here, are painted and observed in not the most graceful manner ever. So the first lady is standing, resting quite heavily on her feet, just here. So her feet are quite ungainly and not very graceful. Shows so... The other dancer then is sitting on the piano and she herself is leaning back to scratch her back. The first lady then as well holds a red fan and has a green ribbon on the back of her dress. This adds colour to the scene and this is echoed by the blue one here and the yellow ribbon here, which draws our eyes in this sort of a motion, in a triangular motion around the scene. The scene itself is light. The room is lightened from the right by tall windows which are reflected in this mirror here. Now this might be also another room but it does look a little bit like a mirror and we can see the light coming in this direction. And the dresses, the little tule dresses here, are reflecting the light from that direction as well. And everyone in the scene is completely oblivious to our presence. So this is the second painting by Degas that we will look at, and this is the Absentine Drinker, Absentine. And it remains one of the most celebrated works of art by Degas because of the controversy it provoked. So a debate was raised, which had questions about what was acceptable in paintings at the time. So L'Absentine is thought to be a scene from one of the cafes in Paris. So actress Ellen Andre, and engraver Montsel Despon are sitting lost in their own thoughts. So the subject matter of this painting is two figures looking quite sad in a bar, in a bar cafe. The slumped woman just here stares expressionless out into the distance. Her hands are lifelessly by her side and her feet are outstretched on the floor ahead of her. Her companion, this gentleman here, makes no contact with her whatsoever and he stares away with a fi fixed expression on his face. There is also an empty seat right here that we are aware of. And this creates a lot of space and tension and we can imagine we are sitting at this table just here. We nearly can imagine that we are also in the cafe observing these other people in the cafe. And remember Degas was a painter of humanity. He was interested in people, everyday people. 
and they are in the cafe drinking. So what they're drinking and the title of the painting is Absentine, which is here. So Absentine was a powerful and toxic liquor, which was available in Paris. And a lot of people, low class people, were addicted to it during the time. It created a lot of problems for these people and the drink itself was later banned. And this is where the debate about this painting was raised, about what was acceptable to show in paintings. So now we'll think about the composition of this painting. So Degas worked hard on the composition of this painting itself. He experimented with light to create space. And remember that light and the effects of light is part of the impressionistic characteristics. So the light falling on the figures, this, this way, creates a play of light and shade and adds to the feeling of gloom. So you can see the light hitting their face and the shadows behind them. The contrast of these dark tones of the black ground with the woman's light shirt and the tabletops creates a huge contrast. The composition itself is quite modern so and is inspired by photography and Japanese prints. So this, the gentleman here, he's partly cut off from the scene as if it's a snapshot like photography. And large geometric shapes of the tabletops just here create tension. And if you notice the tabletops have no legs. So there's a leg missing here and here. The figures are placed on the right hand side of the composition as well. And there is a zigzag effect. So this zigzag effect draws your eye into the composition towards the figures. So Degas' colour palette was slightly different than the Impressionists. Remember, he didn't follow Impressionism completely. But the colour he uses creates a particular mood in this painting. The different blacks, seen here, are pitched against creamy whites, pale yellows, translucent green colours. And this overall creates a slightly delirious kind of colour palette. And the colours themselves were carefully chosen by Degas to create this atmosphere, this gloomy atmosphere. So here I have inserted two of the higher level paper questions that come up about Degas and the type of questions you're asked about him. So you might pause the recording now and have a read of these. And you might think about how you might actually answer a question like this. Thank you for listening to this presentation.